Today Kin meets novelist Kevin Sampson, author of Away Days and Powder, and formerly an editor at Channel 4 and writer for NME. His latest crime thriller, The Killing Pool, was published earlier this year by Cape. Hi Kevin. Hello. Hello, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. (laughs) So, first question. When did you first think, I might be able to write? Um, It's pretty early on, you know. I mean, I uh, grew up in a house full of brothers and I became quite an accomplished fibber and managed to shift the blame for things onto them. So uh, even even then there was a, there was an output for me who skilled with words, but it was I think it was a classic case of it being literally the, the only thing I was any good at or had any interest in at school. Mm-hmm. Numbers terrified me, you know, emotionally and physically. The sight of numbers on it they terrified me. Could never do anything like scientific based chemistry, biology, anything like that. It was just stories, making things up. So um, that was always a, an option for me. The, I think the, the, the three big interests, you know, as a kid and through my life, I've been sort of reading you know, books, football and music, and pretty much everything I've ever done creatively and professionally has had at least one of those things as a, as a common denominator. So, um, the, you know, the first the things I ever, ever wrote which had any kind of form, you know, any kind of structure to them, probably talking about around about the age of 15 and uh, I entered like short story competitions at the, the local library um, and started, you know, started to be at that age, like just writing football match reports, sending them off to the papers. Most of the time you just never hear, but occasionally it would be, you know, a, a kindly individual would write back and say, you know, not just yet, but stick at it. So, yeah, from, from kind of 15 onwards there's a, there's a pattern that starts to progress. Well, it's a notoriously difficult industry to get into, of course. What came first for you? Getting an agent or getting a publishing deal? Um, the story with Away Days was actually, I actually wrote it when I was pretty young. I, I first wrote Away Days in 1982 and sent it off to Penguin and got quite a, an emphatic rejection from it. Put me off for a while, so I, didn't, you know, I left us alone. Not surprised. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was, you know, it was definitely, it was one of those, you know, forget it, there's nothing going on here. Is that framed in the house now? I wish it was, I'd <laughs> love to have it, you know, I've, I've, I've kept, kept some of the good letters throughout my career, but uh, that one was so damning that you know, I wish I kept it, but I didn't, you know, I, don't, I can't even remember the name of the individual, so I'd, I'd love to know if they're still in the business anyway. But, um, yeah, so I think the, so the key thing is that, as I was heard in Welsh, publishers train spotting in 93, and on the back of that, that seemed to spark a new genre of, of I suppose, kind of counterculture, working class, pop culture sort of literature. So you could include in that um, John King, Football Factory, Alex Garland at the Beach, um, um, Alan Warner, Morgan Collar. So all these sort of books are starting to get a platform. I thought, you know, Away days is, you know, it, it might fit in. I wasn't necessarily thinking it was as good as, or, or better, or, or worse. But I just thought these sort of things, are, these sort of voices, are being published now. So, um, one overriding factor in everything I've done has been luck. I think everybody gets a, a degree of good luck and bad luck, and they, they do tend to balance themselves out. But my, my lucky break really was was how I came to find an agent, which was literally bumping into someone in the street. I, was, uh, I used to manage Liverpool and the farm and we used to have this, uh, this incredibly florid Dickensian lawyer called Julian Turton and I, I was in, in London, I walked around the corner, straight smack into Julian Turton, he said what are you up to, what have you been doing? I said I've written this book but I don't know what to do with this and he said oh well my mate, um, she, she looks after a writer called Nick Hornby, who you might have heard of. I said, oh yeah, I've heard of him, yeah, he's all right, yeah. So I sent the manuscript off to her, and she agreed to take me on. And even then, because everything seemed to have taken so long getting to that point, I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, it was going to be a long drawn out process. But within about three weeks of that, she had three or four offers on the table. So I ended up going with Jonathan Cape, who coincidentally published, Irving Welsh published so many great writers at the time. Um, including Roddy Doyle, who you know, The Commitment, one of my favourite books of all time. So I felt as though I was in good company. <laughs> Indeed. And you've taken Away Days and Powder to screen. 
what was that process like? The adaptation process and what were your feelings um, seeing the end results? The adaptation with away days was, was incredibly complex, draining and inspiring in many ways as well. And, and I think you know that is another classic example of just sheer persistence. You know, if you think something is good enough, if you think it has value, then you you know you owe it to yourself never to give up. And and I could always see it, you know, I'd always see the away days in, in pictures and I knew that world and I knew you know how evocative it, it, it potentially could be. And there was so many times when you know different companies had the rights to the novel. Um, the best time with it really was a company, Glasgow based company called Ideal World and they had it in development, first of all Channel 4. And that's where the, the battle came in. There was a guy at Channel 4 called Robin Gutch who was really, really into it and he commissioned, you know, he put a lot of money into it actually, commissioned me to write a script, um, commissioned a second draft, a few polishes, thought, you know, we were very, very close. Then he left, you know, he, he left. That was his Christmas present to us. Come back in January, we, we thought we were starting the new year with the starting date. And um, he went to set up Warbex. So, obviously, you know, that was a, a rewarding job for him. So, ultimately, it came down to a thing of, um, you know, I just couldn't let it go. And I had a world that put so much money into it. They stepped aside um, to cut a long story short, myself and Liverpool based producer called Dave Hughes, did it ourselves, we, we raised most of the money ourselves, we went and got the music, we found the cast, we found the director, did everything. Um, how do I feel about it? It's never, you know, it's never going to be what you imagine, you know, two people are never going to have the same take on something, so what had been in my head for 30 years is not what came out, but nonetheless I the film was an absolute credit to the book. And has punched its weight, you know, it's, it, it, it's there in, a, in, a, in a, a great tradition of British cult movies that might include things like um, Quadrophenia and, and The Wicker Man and Train Spotting. and I think it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's gone and in its place next to them. And finally, I have to ask you, do you believe in creative block? Creative block is an excuse. No <laughs> writer, no creative actually wants to create or write. There's always a cup of coffee. There's always, I'll do it after the news. Oh, it's nearly midday. I'll do it after that. Um, I don't, I, I don't believe in it. I think it's, I, I think it's on the excuse. You've just got to snap out of it and, and get on with it. And, and how do you snap out of it? Just, just, just keep going. I mean, great, you know, a, a great way of kind of oxygenating the brain is to, to go out for a walk or go out for a ride. And that's where we take lucky living here because you know you're, you're never far away from. The river or a, or a canal or somewhere where you can get out on your bike and have a think. But um, if anything like that, it's, to me, it's never more than a 24 hour thing. And, uh, and, and I'm not having it from anyone who says they get it. Sorry. <laughs> Some good tips there. Thank you so much, Kev, for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you.